Good evening, you're watching Poland Daily News. My name is Alexander Wierzejski. Next Wednesday, Parliament will debate a referendum that could be held on the day of the general election on October 15. Law and Justice is presenting second of four questions today, which is about preventing the retirement age from being raised. Yesterday, Law and Justice presented a proposal to limit the sale of state assets. No change to the retirement age. Tusk and his political platform spoke a lot about women as they told them to work almost till death as well as the men. There's no sense in raising their retirement age. People should have a choice. I accept the decision to raise the retirement age to 67. They lied in this matter. Another question for the referendum. Are you with the idea to raise the retirement age for women to 60 and for men to 65? For us, the word of the people is what matters most. The current retirement age in Poland is 60 for women and 65 for men. Many Poles have announced that they will continue to work beyond the retirement age. Poles should have the right to make a decision on this matter. When to retire? I believe in this referendum. This would be the moment to make a stand and voice our concerns. Unless someone wants to work longer and feels strong in their current age with the time on their hands, they have the possibility to work. Tusk has raised their retirement age despite promises. This year, like previous years, Donald Tusk promised to not raise the retirement age. But in conjunction, he denies the will of the Polish people and is attempting to boycott the referendum. This year, as in previous years, the leader of the opposition civic platform, Donald Tusk, assured that he would not raise the retirement age, but today he opposes putting the issue to the will of the people. The opposition says it will boycott the referendum. This is a political trick by peace. Referendums are indeed needed, but not like the ones proposed. It's obvious that it's a political hack. Before the 2011 elections, Civic Platform said it would not raise their retirement age. Since the 1st of January 2013, the POPSL government has broken its promise. It was only in 2015 that President Andrzej Duda lowered the threshold to its current level. It is well known that people did not applaud this decision. In 2013, the government POPSL fell on deaf ears under the demands of the people. Meanwhile, the retirement age was consequently increased. Finally, in 2015, President Andrzej Duda lowered the retirement age to its current requirements. Concerns about VAT mafia and the mistakes associated with governing the taxation system left a giant hole in our national budget. A hole that could sway the European Commission to intervene. From there, the attempts to fill the hole were associated with privatization. The next two questions will be known in the next two days. The referendum will be held on Election Day, 15th of October. Rengaf is the name given to the military operation on Poland's eastern border. The Minister of National Defense, Mariusz Błaszczak, created the Rengaf Task Force and entrusted his command to Colonel Arkadiusz Mikołajczyk. Poland is being attacked in a hybrid way from the territory of Belarus. There is no doubt that the whole hybrid attack scenario was created in the Kremlin. So this is another attempt to rebuild the Russian Empire, this time in Putin's version. Russia has attacked Ukraine. There is a war on our border, but also from the territory of Belarus. Poland was despicably attacked with migrants in the autumn of 2021. This attack is still going on. Every day there are attempts to cross the Polish border. They are unsuccessful because of the construction of the dam, but also because of the full commitment of Polish soldiers standing on the border. At the same time, the head of the Ministry of National Defense announced the creation of a military task force for operating Rengov. The command was given to Colonial Arkadiusz Mikołajczyk. The purpose of the operation is to train the Polish army here in the Podlaski province, near the border with Belarus. Secondary purpose is to create reserves in the case the situation on the Polish-Belarusian border deteriorates, emphasized Minister Blaszczak. We will start these activities in several, perhaps a dozen bases in the Podlaski region. Army troops are already stationed there, or will be soon. Equipment is also being collected to deter the aggressor. The defense minister stressed that the subsequent deployment of military forces to the border was a, of a defensive nature and a response to the escalation of tensions. Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko has said he wants to improve relations with Poland. 
Deputy Foreign Minister Pavel Yabonsky responded yesterday. Our answer is, stop attacking our border, release political prisoners, then relations will really improve. It's very simple. According to Kremlin, two Ukrainian rockets have been shot down near the Crimea bridge. Russian media report traffic jammed near bridge. Ukraine has not commented yet. Moscow's defense minister said on Saturday that Ukraine had tried to strike that bridge, also known as the Kerch Strait Bridge, with Su-200 rockets, but according to Russians that no damage or casualties had been caused. Russians installed Crimea Governor Sergei Aksionov said in a statement posted on the Telegram messaging app that two rockets had been downed by anti-aircraft defenses near the bridge, which separates the peninsula from the Russian mainland and has come under repeated attack from Kiev since last year. He later added that Russian forces had downed another rocket. Footage appearing to show the 12-mile, 19-kilometer-long bridge wreathed in smoke was circulating on Russian social media. Interfax news agency reported that the bridge had been closed to traffic. This comes after the Russian Defense Ministry said on the Telegram messaging app that it had destroyed 20 Ukrainian drones launched towards the Crimea Peninsula early on Saturday, adding that there were no casualties nor damage. August 12 marks 15th anniversary of Russian troops marching towards Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia. Putin's aim was to change the country's authorities to pro-Russian ones. At the time, Polish President Lech Kaczynski flew to Georgian capital along with the president of Ukraine, Lithuania and Estonia. After a rally in the city center, the Russians' armored columns stopped. It's been 15 years since Russian troops marched into Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia. Putin's aim was to change the country's authorities to pro-Russian ones. At the time, Polish President Lech Kaczynski flew to the Georgian capital along with the president of Ukraine, Lithuania and Estonia. After a rally in the city center, the Russian armored columns stopped. August 2008, Putin attacks independent Georgia. The Russians bombed the Black Sea port of Poti and the military base at Senaki. President Lech Kaczynski organizes a flight of the presidents of Ukraine, Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia to Tbilisi. That country believes that from the times of the fallen old Russian Imperium, the times have to return. And we too very well know that today, Georgia, tomorrow Ukraine, and after tomorrow the Baltic nations, and later on maybe even my country, Poland. Thanks to this historic trip, the world learned of the Russian threat and Putin was forced to stop the offensive. We are guided by the words of President Lech Kaczynski from 2008. As he said, at the time, today, Central Europe still has brave leaders and our policy has become completely subjective, which is not to the taste of many European leaders who are urging their subordinates in the Polish opposition to quickly return to the old ways and be completely subject to their decision. It turned out that it was a necessary strategy. It was the reality of the police to give up Poland, meaning hard political standards that were successful. I think in general, Lech Kaczynski was not valued and despised. Lech Kaczynski's words proved prophetic. The West failed to learn the lesson of the attack on Georgia and pursued a reset policy towards Moscow, the consequences of which are today's war in Ukraine. President Lech Kaczynski's historic speech and his whole term in office showed that it was President Lech Kaczynski that had this ability to predict and accurately interpret certain actions and movements. That's it for now. Join us tomorrow, same time. Yeah.